Hey everyone, how's it going? Techno Tiger here, and I hope you're doing well. Today I'll be bringing you guys another Warframe guide. This time it's on the newest Warframe recently released in Prime Access, Mirage Prime. This Warframe takes advantage of Illusion, but her damage is no smoke and mirrors, as her huge buffs can make any weapon amazing. Mirage is the first quest Warframe to receive the Prime treatment, but with that being said, you obtain her all the same. In this guide, I'll be showing you the best way to get her parts, the different mods I use for her, and lastly a few different weapon combinations I feel work best with this Warframe. As always, if you prefer to read the guide, head over to Medium where I post the written guide, and make sure to check out my Twitch where I can answer any questions you may have live. All the links will be in the description, so without further ado, let's jump into the guide. So first off, I did want to show you guys exactly where to farm Mirage as well as all of her relics that do have the parts for her. Now this of course can be used for anything that drops from relics in the game, and I wanted to quickly show you guys. So you can go into your codex, universe, and relics. Here you can search for whatever you want, and in this case it's going to be Mirage. Now all these relics do drop from uh, the, the world currently, and you're going to need each one for each different part. And so I'll show you guys exactly where I farmed each different part. I got the Lith S7 relic that drops the chassis from the Lith defense mission. Now it's really no surprise here, this place has a really high drop chance for relics, and it's on Earth. Pretty much everyone should be able to farm here, even newer players. The next part is going to be the Mezzo H1 relic, and this one does drop the Neuroptics. This one I did like to farm at the IO spot, it's IO on Jupiter. And this is also a defense mission with Corpus. It's a fairly easy mission that you should be able to get to if you have been playing the game for you know, a decent amount of time and it's pretty fun to do. There's a lot of groups there. I like that place a lot. And so for this last one, the Neo M1 as well as the V6, the M1 drops the blueprint and the V6 drops the chassis or uh, the systems, excuse me. And both of these can be gotten from the same defense, and so I like to go to the Hydron Sedna defense. Unfortunately, it's difficult to find any lower level missions that do drop any of the Neos. So unfortunately, if you are a newer player, you're going to have to get a taxi here, and even then, it's probably going to be difficult for you to farm this area. So um, in that case, maybe try to get a clan mate or some friends to help you out, I would recommend. Or maybe if you've saved up some plat, then you can buy these extra pieces and just farm those first two that I was talking about. But these are what I found to be the most efficient for farming these relics. It's not really a coincidence that any of these, that all of these are defense. I found this to be the most convenient and best way to get uh, the highest drop chance for these relics. The second best would be interception missions but um, I don't like doing those as much as it's not very easy to solo all of those or all of the different points on interception missions. You can try your hand at something like excavation missions but they have a chance to drop a lot of other things so the chance for getting relics isn't nearly as high which is why I would recommend all of these different defense missions. Of course this is just my experience so if you guys did find anything to work better please let me know down in the comments. Now that you guys know exactly where to get the parts and how to get the parts, I'm going to show you guys and jump into the actual guide so you know how to play this awesome new frame. Now that you know how to obtain Mirage Prime, I'll quickly go over her abilities and how I like to mod this Warframe. Keep in mind, this isn't the end all be all of builds, as there are plenty of others that are great, but here I'll be focusing on amplifying weapon damage via her Hall of Mirrors and Eclipse abilities. Firstly, she has a passive that allows for getting around easier, as it makes sliding and acrobatic maneuvers faster. Her first ability, Hall of Mirrors, creates up to four copies of her that distract enemies and replicate some of the damage you do. The second is Sleight of Hand, and this ability has two functionalities. It can either create a jewel that can blind enemies in the dark, or explode and deal damage in the light. Thirdly, we have Eclipse, which when standing in the shadows decreases the damage you take, and when out in the light increases the damage you do. And finally, we have Prism. Here, Mirage throws a disco ball that shoots lasers in all directions, and when activated again, blinds all nearby enemies. So here, Mirage has a lot of functionality with her abilities, and may be overwhelming at first. But luckily for this build, we're mainly going to be using her first and third ability, Hall of Mirrors and Eclipse. We'll be focusing on maximizing their duration and strength to get the most uptime and damage output. Alright, now that you guys know everything there is to know about Mirage, I'm going to quickly go over and show you guys the different mods that I like to use when I am playing her. 
as you can see here, this is a two form of build. So if you do want to min max a little bit more, say level up these mods that I don't have leveled up, it is going to cost you a few more forma. So make sure to keep that in mind. Now for the auras here, I have the Corrosive Projection. And like always, I'm not going to tell you guys all the different mods here. I'm simply going to go over and tell you a few different reasonings for certain slots, as well as a few different options if you do want to swap something out. And so back to Corrosive Projection, you, the Warframe is already pre-aligned for the dash. And so Corrosive Projection is a no-brainer as it's a very good ore to begin with and it has nearly 100% uptime when you are playing Mirage. For the Exilus, as always, take it or don't take it. It's completely up to you if you happen to have an adapter, then feel free to get it. The extra strength is really nice on Power Drift. I wouldn't really recommend the Cunning Drift or anything like that. They don't seem as necessary as Power Drift. And for survivability, I am taking Quick Thinking. Of course, you can take Vitality or Redirection, but I found Quick Thinking saved me a ton of different times, especially in higher level content. Now the last necessary one for sure is going to be Hall of Malevolence and maybe you guys haven't heard of this before. This is a Mirage only uh, mod and you can get this from I think one of the standing vendors in your ship so make sure to check that out. And what it does is it gives you 5% damage on your doppelgangers for each kill you get with them. And I think it stacks up to 50 so it's straight up just extra damage and seems like a really good pick here. Now the options that you guys have is between Flow and Constitution. Now originally I put the dash alignment here for flow because um, it seemed like I need a lot of the energy but I found that when I'm only using her 1 and 3 ability that you don't really need that much energy and so that's what we're building around of course is the duration and strength for her 1 and 3 ability but if you do use your second ability sleight of hand and the fourth ability prism then you are going to need the flow as, it, that, as those two take a lot more energy than your 1 and 3. So like I said, different play styles, swap it out or use it, it's up to you. I do use it because it is nice to have the extra energy, but a good option is you can throw Constitution in there instead, take off Flow, and throw in Transient Fortitude. The extra strength is nice, the durability loss will be mitigated by Constitution, so this would be a pretty good option to take if you wanted a little bit more damage. But like I said, I don't take it, I think this is enough and this is fine here, especially if you're running Prime Flow. So that's a few of my different thinkings and thoughts here and the options I like to take. So now that you guys know everything here, I'll go over and show you a few of the different weapon combinations and what I think works best when you are playing Mirage. So here I'll be showing you guys all of the different weapons and weapon combinations that I found to work best with Mirage and her doppelgangers. A few of these weapons have really interesting and awesome interactions with her doppelgangers, so make sure to keep that in mind when you do see the weapons that I pick. As always, if you guys have found anything else to work extremely well, or even better than anything I've listed here, make sure to throw it down in the comments as I always like to hear what you guys have to say. Now the very first weapon that I'm picking is going to be the Sinoid Simulor. This is a syndicate weapon, and it's just okay in every other Warframe's hands, but when it comes to her and her doppelgangers, Mirage makes this weapon shine, as it can dish out a ton of damage and level entire waves of enemies. Now as for any other weapon, I found weapons with explosive or area damage type uh, damage seemed to really shine when it came to Mirage and her doppelgangers. So something like the Tonkor, Tigris, Opticor, especially the Lens Ignis, all did extremely well. And I really just chalked it up to the fact that one flamethrower isn't nearly as good as four flamethrowers. <laughs> But seriously, the AoE damage seemed to work extremely well, so if you guys have any AoE weapons, I would definitely try that and tell me what you guys think. Not to say that any of the single target or smaller area of effect weapons uh, are were any worse than normal, because the Warframe really just takes any weapon you have and makes it extremely good. So like I was saying in the beginning, go out and take any weapon that you like, that you enjoy using, and see how much better the Warframe makes it. This is extremely similar to the uh, Chroma effect, where if you have any weapon, Chroma makes it better. It's extremely similar to that, and any weapon I took out, I really enjoyed using. Just some worked better than others. Now for secondaries, uh, the Angstrom and, yeah, the Angstrom worked extremely well here, and any throwing weapon that had an explosive mod on it actually seemed to work really well. 
just try not to kill yourself because I've been having a problem with that because they do do damage to you if you're close enough. So keep that in mind, but make sure, again, overarching theme is to try anything that you guys think might do really well. I just found that the angstrom, because it shoots rockets, worked really well here. Now for weapons, uh, make sure that you guys know that your weapons do really matter because, especially for melee, they carry over any elemental damage. So this is very good for stripping armor, and it's actually going to do a surprising amount of damage because your melee weapons, all four of your copies use your melee weapons. But for example, when you're using the Sonoid Simulor, only you and two of your copies are going to be shooting copies. So it's kind of interesting. Make sure to mess around with the different weapon types because they do have different interactions with the doppelgangers. So with that being said, the Orthos or any staff-like weapon seem to work extremely well with her and her doppelgangers because they do have an extremely high amount of base damage as well as a lot of area. And that is working really well or it seemed to work really well with her and all of her copies. So anything like the uh, Orthos, the Bow, or the Castle War, or even the Guandao all seem to be extremely effective. But like I said, uh, maybe you try out the Glaive, I didn't get a chance to do that, but any of the whips seem like they might be good. Again, tell me what you guys think about the weapons that you like. So that's pretty much the overarching theme. This Warframe is extremely potent in its own way and now I'll show you guys all of the other different interactions that I think work really well and I'll go and explain through a couple different tips that I found while playing this Warframe. So here I'm going to go over just the playstyle of this guide so far. I'm going to show you how it all comes together quickly. It's not very complicated, I just wanted to make sure it was clear to everyone. And then I'll head over and show you guys the tips at the very end. And so for this gameplay, you are, like I said at the beginning, going to be using mainly your one and your three. So your uh, Hall of Mirrors as well as your Eclipse ability. You're going to want to maintain them 100% uptime or as much as you possibly can. As you can see here, I am running around a lot, so that means I'm going to be picking up a lot of energy. So I don't really have any energy issues when I am playing Mirage, at least this type of Mirage. Um, the more I do use Sleight of Hand and Prism, I am going to be running out of energy. So keep that in mind, if you do use those a lot, then you might want to be bringing uh, the Xenoric Lens just so that you can get the energy aura. But besides that, I don't really see why you would have any energy problems, especially if you are using the Sinoid Simular, because on proc, it does give you energy when you see that explosion on the screen just then with the star at the top you should get an energy proc as well as an uh, an explosion that radiates from you dealing damage so that's just a little bit extra uh, energy so you guys don't have to worry about that pretty much at all and it's it's really nice how it works in unison like that so besides that it's pretty much leaving up your one and your three using your two your sleight of hand for some traps maybe you there's an area that a lot of enemies run through so you can leave a trap there and same thing with your prism, if there's an area that there's a lot of enemies running down, like a long hallway, you can use your prism, throw it down there. Uh, if it doesn't do enough damage, if the enemies are too high level, then you can use it to blind them and that'll give you a few seconds of where you can run in and finish them off. Or you can run away, whatever you gotta do. So this build is really simple, but that's really why I like it. Uh, I enjoy this type of playstyle, and so now we're gonna get into the tips. So here I'm going to briefly go over a few of the clips in the background and then simply speak on Mirage it's herself and uh, tell you guys what I thought. So this first weapon I'm using is the Simulor. As you can see, the AoE damage here is crazy. These guys are only level 20, but I just wanted to show you the uh, pulling effect that it has. So normally you shoot one orb at a time and they collect together eventually, but with all of your extra guys, you get that collecting effect and more damage a lot faster with the Simulor than before. And here's another demonstration of the Orthos completely demolishing these level 110 uh, Grenier Bombards. And so it's just an amazing amount of damage. And those two are really found to work really, really well together. The Orthos as well as the Simulor. Now the next part, I'm going to show you how well the lens works. And an interesting uh, interaction that I found with the lens and the clones is usually when you run into the area of the lens arrow it does explode and kill you as you can see here 
but an interesting thing I found is when your clones are the ones that shoot the arrows, you actually don't take damage. Only the ones that you shoot yourself initially do damage to yourself. So it's kind of interesting. It's not really something you can take uh, full advantage of just because usually it's pretty difficult to find the different uh, ones between yours as well as your clones in battle, but I just thought it was a pretty interesting thing to know in case you find yourself in a rough spot and the only corner is in an explosive arrow from your clone. But um, besides that, a few you know extra thoughts on Mirage herself is I really really enjoyed her. She's suddenly become one of my favorite Warframes because previously I didn't have Mirage. Uh, funny enough, I've been playing the game a long time, but I just haven't gotten around to doing any of the uh, extra quests that give you all of the Warframes, uh, just simply because I haven't really sought them out. And so this is my first time really playing Mirage. I don't know if you guys feel the same way, whether you really like her Prime version or don't like her Prime version, whether you're disappointed. That'd be interesting to know because I don't have a real reference of anything before the Prime version. So I really thought um, she's really fun to play. I like it because I like her play style. She's really active kind of Warframe, not really sitting back like maybe a Saren and relying entirely on their abilities. I like getting in there and fighting. And so I think this Warframe caters like really well to my play style and how I enjoy the game so far. And uh, so I'm really, really enjoying her, like I said. I plan on playing her a lot more in the future and seeing how maybe she interacts differently with more weapons. I heard the static core is really nice for the secondary, so I gotta try that out pretty soon. But um, yeah, I hope this guide helped you guys out a lot. I hope you feel the same. If you don't, like I said, I always like to see your guys' comments. I read every single one of them, and I really appreciate uh, how supportive you guys have been lately. We did get over 100,000 views, so that's really nice. Hopefully you get to the 1,000 subscribers pretty soon here. So thanks again guys, as always, check me out, like I said in Twitch, all the important links that you guys are going to look for are in the description, and so I will see you guys there. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys very soon.